Real Stories Tapes True Crime is your new true crime podcast fix. In our first season, we'll explore suspicious deaths at a California hospital and a skydiver landing dead on a suburban driveway with a bag containing guns, drugs, and night vision goggles. To join our investigation, search and subscribe to Real Stories Tapes True Crime on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. They should be the most innocent members of society. But children can be capable of the most sadistic, premeditated and brutal murders. They beat him and hit him with a bottle. One of them stabbed Jay straight through the heart. What drives these kids to kill men, women, friends, family? She was determined that her mother had to die. Even their teachers. This was the first occasion upon which a teacher had been killed in class in the course of conducting a lesson. Could they be born evil? He did have a weird, dark sense of humour. He was a little bit different to most of the other kids. He was aggressive, threatening and dangerous. Or are they victims of their environment? There was a lot of gangs, there was a lot of violence, a lot of drug abusers. With exceptional access to real police tapes. Your voices are talking to me. You need to make a sacrifice, or we're going to come and get you. You need to do it. And interviews with those closest to the victims and the perpetrators. A red mist had simply descended. (laughs) We reveal what made them such savage killers. In 2014, police were called to a secondary school in Leeds where they were faced with a shocking scene. There was absolutely nothing to explain why he became so determined to cause her death. A much-loved teacher had been brutally slain in the middle of a lesson. She got up and tried to make her escape, but he followed and persisted with his homicidal attack. The murder sent shockwaves through the country. Even in a world in which we've become accustomed, sadly, to knife crime, Anne Maguire's death was particularly shocking. More shocking still, the killer was one of the teacher's own students, 15-year-old William Cornick. A fact which was to make this case and his murder trial the first of its kind in the UK. There was absolutely nothing about him that would say to you, there is someone who is dangerous, let alone someone who is liable to carry out a murder. A seemingly model pupil, Cornick had no history of trouble at home or at school. But what was it that made this 15-year-old suddenly and so violently decide to murder his teacher? You would think you were dealing with a very likeable young man, yet beneath the surface there was a rage that was hidden. Corpus Christi Catholic College in Leeds is much like any other secondary school. Corpus Christi is a good Catholic school. All my family went there. It's got a good reputation. I had an Ofsted report which showed that it was good in terms of its safety record and had a very positive ethos with pupil learning and generally very good behaviour throughout the school. But on the 28th of April 2014, the school was thrown into turmoil. A teacher lay dying after being savagely attacked in class. It was the only time in British history that a teacher had been stabbed in her own classroom. The victim of this savage and surprise attack was much-loved Spanish teacher Anne Maguire. Miss Maguire was a kind teacher. She was... I I loved her in my eyes. What makes this as tragic a story as you can, can imagine is that Anne Maguire wasn't just just a teacher, she was a stalwart of a whole school community. Anne had dedicated her entire career, spanning over 40 years, to Corpus Christi, teaching generations of families from the local area. 
She was said to be an immensely approachable, warm-hearted teacher who had the pastoral needs of her students at heart. The two things she devoted her life to was her teaching and her family. She lived in Leeds with her husband, uh, Don, and she had four children, um, her two daughters, who were her natural children. Um, but she also adopted her sister's two sons, I think back in the 1980s, uh, when unfortunately her sister died. It would be a total shock to everyone how this hugely well-liked and caring teacher could be murdered. And that one of her own pupils had struck the deadly blows. The actual circumstances of the killing were savage. So, to do... With GCSE exams imminent, Mrs Maguire had been leading a regular Spanish revision lesson for a class of 15 and 16-year-olds, with the pupils split across two classrooms. One of these pupils was 15-year-old Will Cornick. During the Spanish lesson, um, he got up from his seat where he'd been working, took out his knife, Cornick then concealed the 21 centimetre blade in the sleeve of his shirt. Going out of one classroom, entering the classroom in which she was teaching. Mrs Maguire, who was focused on what she was teaching, was caught completely off guard and was totally defenceless. She was bent over a desk helping another student. He approached her from behind and then stabbed her to the back and to the neck on seven occasions. The savagery of this attack and the calmness on the build-up to stabbing Anne Maguire shows his hatred for his teacher. He was totally calm and he wanted to enact the most severe pain he could on Anne Maguire. This shows that this was a personal attack. He wanted to cause pain and nothing was going to stop him. The worst injuries were in her neck, so the injuries were absolutely horrendous. She got up, realised she'd been stabbed and tried to make her escape, but he followed and persisted with his homicidal attack. Somehow, Anne managed to escape to the safety of another room. Mrs Gray was dying and she knew that she was in a really bad way. Cornick, meanwhile, discarded the knife and calmly returned to his desk, where he was apprehended by other teaching staff. Will Cornick, as, as we know, went and sat back in his chair. One of the teachers eventually took him down into the reception area to wait for the police. News of what happened quickly spread around the school, including the lesson Zach Capitano was in. From my English class, I could see the front yard of the school and an ambulance response car turned up and then a police car turned up and then a, the big police van with the armour turned up. And I asked the teacher what was happening. The teacher said, oh, I don't know, nothing. And then one of our other teachers came through and said that our lesson will be extended because there'd been an incident with the teacher. I said to my teacher, I said, I bet it's Will Corney. She looked at me in shock, as if to wonder how I knew. While police detained Cornick, Paramedics tried desperately to save Anne Maguire's life. Anne Maguire, who was given emergency treatment, taken to hospital, but unfortunately, I don't think there was very much they could do. The injuries were absolutely terrible. Uh, I think the first paramedic on the scene said that they were some of the worst stab injuries that they had ever seen. But what was it that made this 15-year-old suddenly and so violently decide to murder? And could it have been prevented? 15-year-old Will Cornick had become the first pupil in the UK to murder a teacher while in school when he viciously attacked his Spanish teacher, Anne Maguire, with a knife, stabbing her seven times in the neck and back. This was the first occasion upon which a teacher had been attacked and killed in school and indeed in class in the course of conducting a lesson. Following the murder, attention immediately turned to why the teenager had carried out the heinous crime. William Cornick was born on the 26th of June, 1998. According to his parents, he was a loving and caring son who had a good relationship with his older brother and his younger stepbrother. His parents had separated when he was six years old 
but the split had been amicable. Will had been brought up in um, the Leeds area by a family that were a very close family, a very loving family and a very supportive family. There had been a divorce, the parents lived separately, but they were both very responsible people. There's nothing in the divorce of Cornick's parents that raises alarm bells for me. Many children go through divorce of their parents, and it only causes problems when there's hostility and aggression and associated problems. We don't see that in this case. Cornick had never been in trouble with the police. At school, he was described as a good student with an excellent attendance record. He was a young person who was bright, uh, intellectually able, and in fact had undertaken GCSEs a year earlier than otherwise he would have done. In his school report the year before the murder, Anne Maguire had even described him as a bright and conscientious student. Zach Capitano was a classmate of Cornick's. I think we first met when we was maybe about 13, 14 years old properly. Uh, he was in my form class for two years. On a morning he used to play cards with Will. We played different games like Blackjack and Scabby Queen, things like that, um, before we went to class when we were sat in form. I was in the same English and maths as Will. He seemed normal. He wasn't my type of person. We had different tastes for things, but he just seemed like another normal kid in my class. He was possibly a bit shy, possibly a bit reserved, possibly a little awkward or strange in some ways. Um, but uh, in many ways, not very different from hundreds of thousands of similar teenagers out there. Normally, as a psychologist, when looking at children who murder or commit serious violence, I would expect to see telltale signs, things such as an unstable environment. There was absolutely nothing about him that would say to you there is someone who is dangerous, let alone someone who is liable to carry out a murder. So why did Will Cornick commit murder? One thing that was evident was his dislike of Anne Maguire. Will always said that he didn't like Miss Maguire, but we always thought it was just the normal dislike for a teacher. There was teachers that I didn't like, teachers that other pupils didn't like, who would have never dreamed of doing anything like what Will did. Three months before the murder, in a seemingly innocuous incident, Cornick had been reprimanded by Mrs Maguire. There had been um, a difficult interaction between Will and uh, Anne Maguire in the February, um, and th this seemed to have arisen because he didn't do any homework and then was placed on detention, which meant that he couldn't go on a bowling trip. That was almost like public humiliation for him, that she, how dare she, how dare she tell me not to go, which he showed that that's what he was feeling because he then turned up and went on the trip anyway, so he completely defied what she said to him, which suggests he was thinking, you have no right to tell me that I won't go on that school trip. And that led to further repercussions and, in fact, what they called uh, an internal exclusion, which meant he had to work on his own in class for, for a day because of that. From the school's point of view, it was the end of the matter. But for Cornick, this appears to have reinforced his hatred of Mrs Maguire. There was something, some really deep-seated anger going on inside him, but nobody seems to know where that's come from. And in the months that followed, it appears that Will's hatred turned deadly. It came to a head on Monday the 28th of April, 2014. William Cornick controlled this offence from start to finish, at least over the weekend before he'd appeared to be entirely normal with uh, his family, did normal things, was laughing and joking, interacting, but all the time he was planning what was to occur on the Monday morning. On the day of the killing, there's no doubt that Will Cornick went to school intent upon an attack on uh, Anne Maguire, uh, and indeed intent upon a murder. He went to his mother's house on the morning, armed himself with knives deliberately uh, because he thought they were knives that would be effective in killing her, hid them in his school bag, 
and he also took with him a bottle of Jack Daniels, uh, which was in order to celebrate what he was about to achieve. Despite the fact he was planning to commit murder that day, Cornick didn't seem to be nervous. In fact, he appeared very relaxed. The morning that it happened, I asked Will if he wanted to play cards, and he said no. And I said, oh, should we play cards tomorrow then? And Will said, oh, I won't be here tomorrow. And I just thought he was going to pull a, pull a sickie from school or just not come in and skive. So we parted ways after form class, went on to the rest of his lessons, and then I was in English and he was upstairs in Spanish. Rather than trying to hide what he was planning to do, Cornick had also gone out of his way to make sure other classmates knew he intended to kill. He even showed uh, pupils on the Monday morning the knives that he had in his possession. Telling them what he planned to do, but let none of them believed him. This isn't something that he had been stewing with himself and plotting internally. He actually made this known to people. He wanted to brag almost about what he was going to do. So maybe then once he's told enough people, he almost has to go through it. Once the lesson with Mrs Maguire began, Cornick carried out his gruesome plan. He winked at a fellow pupil after showing him the knife, then made his way to the classroom, or the part of the classroom where Anne Maguire had been seated. And then he began to stab her repeatedly to the back and the neck and other parts of her body. Hearing a commotion, other staff went to help Mrs Maguire. She ran from the classroom and into the arms of another teacher, Susan Francis, whose bravery and decency stood in stark contrast to the behaviour of Will Cornick. She took Anne Maguire, who obviously was bleeding very badly, into a workroom. And put a foot against the door to stop Cornick getting into this other room. She held Anne Maguire in her arms, spoke to her about her own children, Anne Maguire's children, and told her that she was loved. Strikingly, Cornick remained calm throughout the attack, showing no concern even as Anne Maguire lay dying. He then returned to where he'd been sat originally and said to the class so that they could all hear uh, good times. Even when he was arrested by police, Cornick appeared unfazed and indifferent to the dreadful crime he'd just committed. And by all accounts, he waited calmly. I think he asked the first police officer to arrive what their favourite movie was. He was acting in an astonishingly relaxed way. There's an element of calmness that's chilling about this case. The build-up, the way that he was behaving that morning, he was behaving no differently. The way in which he actually went about killing Anne Maguire and the calmness afterwards, even to the point when the police arrive, tells me that he is completely emotionally disconnected to what he's done. In the immediate aftermath, there was disbelief that something so horrific could happen. We just sat and was just all together waiting for news or waiting to find out what happened. The headmaster contacted Anne Maguire's husband, Don. He received a telephone call from the school's headmaster informing him that there'd been an incident with a knife and Anne had been taken to hospital. He believed that this was a kind of superficial incident, obviously a worry, but there was no cause for enormous alarm, only to arrive at the hospital and find that his wife's lifeless body was being desperately trying to be re revived by a team of paramedics. I don't think his brain could actually process what had happened. He simply hadn't been prepared. We didn't know the extent of what had happened because all of the pupils that was in the classroom with her was taken down to the library and kept in the library to talk to the police. We only realised how serious it was closer to the end of the day when we found out that she'd actually died at the hospital. Anne Maguire's death left the school and the local community devastated. The effect on the school and the community is kind of obvious in some ways. I mean, the, the, the shock's incredible. No, no school in 
in Britain's really had to had to uh, cope with anything like that before. I mean, there have been teachers, unfortunately, who have died, but not not at the hands of a pupil in a classroom. In the days after, the school said that they were staying open and the pupils were welcome to come and grieve together. The head teacher did an amazing job of looking after us all. Everyone was writing out like prayers on pieces of paper for Miss Maguire and hanging them on the trees in the chapel and things like that. It would be really difficult for a school to move on from such a horrific incident. You'd have the trauma of the pupils, the trauma of the teachers, the sadness and the grief that they go through. What would make the murder even harder to deal with, though, was the discovery William Cornick had been telling people for months he was going to kill Anne Maguire. He'd exchanged Facebook messages with some of his friends in which he'd spoken of his intention to kill her. Vitriolic messages with incredible violence in them. I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. We have Maguire and I want her to perish. Will Cornick was just 15 years old when he savagely stabbed a teacher to death in the middle of a lesson in front of his classmates. She was stabbed seven times in a really brutal fashion. Showing no remorse, he seemed to revel in what he had done. He then returned to where he'd been sat originally and said to the class, good times. With Cornick in police custody, an investigation now began to try and work out why a bright pupil with no apparent issues could carry out such a brutal act. One of the things that the police did was to seize any electronic devices that Will Cornick was the owner or user of. That included his mobile telephone. And when the police interrogated what was on his mobile telephone, they discovered that there were many photographs of knives. When he starts to become obsessed with knives, this is the indicator that something darker is going on in William Cornick's mind. Many children are withdrawn as teenagers, Many teenagers hate their teacher, but not many teenagers become obsessively interested in knives and violence. Investigators would also make another shocking discovery when they looked into Cornick's social media accounts. He'd not just been posting about how much he hated Anne Maguire, he'd been publicly telling everyone he wanted to murder her. So in the build-up to the, to, the, to the killing, William Cornick uh, exchanged a number of social media messages with friends of his at school in which he expressed his absolute hatred for uh, Anne Maguire and also expressed his intention to do her serious harm and indeed to kill her. Two months before he killed Anne Maguire, he sent a message on Facebook which said of her, the only one absolute effing bitch that deserves more than death, more than pain, torture, more than anything we can understand. In another message he said, as long as she's alive, I'll be depressed, sad and angry, so there's only one thing to do. Perhaps one of the most chilling messages he sent was simply... I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, we have Maguire, and I want her to perish. Many teenagers hate particular teachers, and that can become quite consuming. But what we see in this case is an absolute daily all-consuming hatred of Anne Maguire. He talks about it in Facebook, he talks about it in text messages. It's part of his daily conversation with his peers at school. He hates Anne Maguire to de the degree that he says it's either her or him. Cornick confessed he'd actually made the decision to turn his twisted fantasy into reality and commit murder three years earlier when he was just 12. Shockingly, it would also be discovered that he'd talked about carrying out more than one killing. William Cornick uh, killed Anne Maguire, but that wasn't his only intention. Um, he, he'd said that he'd planned a triple homicide, and he'd said that to uh, uh, other pupils. He'd also said it to the psychiatrists uh, involved in this case. He wanted to get the our head of year and one of the science teachers was pregnant. He'd said that he wanted to get the pregnant teacher to kill two in one. Cornick has never revealed whether his plan to go on a killing spree was serious, and if it was, why he didn't carry it out. 
But what wasn't in doubt was that he had killed Anne Maguire. Prosecutors now needed to decide if they could charge him with murder. Once the police had concluded their investigation, the focus of the work, both of the defence and of the prosecution, shifted on to uh, another issue. We needed to know what was Will Cornick's state of mind, uh, what was it that had caused him to act as he did, uh, and was he suffering from a mental illness, an abnormality of mind, uh, that meant that he had a partial defence available to him. Following his arrest, Cornick was held in a secure hospital where he was assessed by a team of doctors led by eminent psychiatrist Dr John Kent. I saw him for probably uh, seven or eight hours in total over three or four interviews. He sat there very calmly. There was nothing outstanding about the way in which he said things. The outstanding thing was the content of what he said, which was brutal and quite shocking. He said the following, um, I wasn't in shock, I was happy. I had a sense of pride, I still do. I know it's uncivilised, but I know it's incredibly instinctual and human. Past generations of life, killing is a route of survival. It's kill or be killed. I didn't have a choice, it was kill her or suicide. Why he's become so fixated in this regard has been a puzzle to, to me as a psychiatrist and I think to, to the world looking in on this case. What was apparent throughout Cornick's assessment was a complete disregard for the consequences to others of his actions. I also asked him how the children who'd witnessed this offence must be feeling and how the family of uh, Anne Maguire must be feeling. And, and generally, he made some very derogatory comments, saying things like, I couldn't give a shit. But one comment that was very notable, he said, I know the victim's family will be upset, but I don't care. In my eyes, everything I've done is fine and dandy. Dr Kent concluded that Will Cornick was an extremely dangerous offender because of exactly how he presented. You would think you were dealing with a very calm, very ordinary, very likeable young man. Yet beneath the surface, there was a rage that was hidden and could not be seen, uh, but which could manifest itself in acts of extreme violence. What caused this rage wasn't clear. But Cornick did discuss in detail a couple of potential factors. If you were trying to find a trigger or something in his life that had changed him uh, and made him the way he was, the, the only thing, uh, obviously, that you could see was that when he'd been um, a couple of years younger, he had very suddenly uh, collapsed in a diabetic coma um, and was diagnosed as an insulin-dependent diabetic. One of his biggest ambitions early on was to join the army. Well, that then became impossible because of the uh, nature of his diabetes. Having type 1 diabetes does not predispose you to any kind of violence. What can happen, though, is when anybody is given any kind of diagnosis that has a significant change in their life, it can cause associated low mood, depression, anxiety, uncertainty about the future, particularly if it changes their aspirations of what they want to do, it can have a big impact on somebody. Cornick's friends had noticed a change in him after the diagnosis, including a new dark sense of humour. I used to sell Lucas Aids and chocolate bars in school, and sometimes if I asked him if he wanted one, he was a diabetic and he'd say, oh, yeah, I'll have a Lucas Aid, I like the taste of death. He used to take his artificial pancreas out of his pocket which is like a machine that acted as his pancreas and put it in his mouth and say, my party trick is I can put my pancreas in my mouth. His diabetes, though, would be discounted by doctors as a factor that could be used in his defence. The diabetes itself um, doesn't seem to have played any part in this offence because it's too calculated, it's too well thought through, so there's nothing spontaneous or... Um, delirious about it, if you like. And a suggestion by Cornick that he'd been hearing voices was also ruled out 
after damning evidence was revealed. In December 2013, in fact, it was Christmas Eve, Will Cornick posted to a friend that he had thought of brutally killing Mrs. Maguire and that he would then say that he heard voices in order to get eventually what he described as comfy walls. And in fact, he later did assert that he was hearing voices. I thought that uh, um, he was possibly or probably using um, those expressions as a way of trying to uh, manage the court process. In my opinion, William Cornick is testing the water for possible defences to get off murder. For example, the psychosis comment and referring to his diabetes. But actually, he might be bright, but he's not bright enough to understand the complexities of the legal system. There were clearly disturbing attributes to William Cornick's character, but ultimately he was assessed to be of sound mind when he killed Anne Maguire. Once we'd seen the expert report prepared by the prosecution, what was absolutely clear from those reports was that um, nobody was saying that Will was suffering from any sort of psychotic episode or uh, other form of psychotic illness at the time of the killing. Uh, in, in other words, we, we could rule out uh, anything like schizophrenia or any other type of um, psychotic episode. What they were all sure about was that he'd intended to kill Anne Maguire uh, and that he remained extremely dangerous. Left with no credible defence, Cornick was advised that his only option was to plead guilty to the murder of Anne Maguire. When a person enters a guilty plea, there is no trial and no evidence is called. Uh, what happens is that there is a hearing at which the prosecution outlines to the judge the factual circumstances of the killing. On the 3rd of November 2014, William Cornick was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 20 years. As he was sentenced, Cornick showed little emotion. I didn't ever think that Will Cornick seemed particularly concerned about the situation he was in. His parents were incredibly concerned for him. But I never had the impression that Will Cornick himself was very frightened of the consequences, if you like. He continued to view this as being a necessary evil, by which I mean that it had been necessary for him to kill Anne Maguire and therefore it was necessary for him to serve a long sentence in custody um, if that's what it needed to get the job done. Cornick may have been convicted, but for Anne's family, lots of unanswered questions remained. Why was Anne killed is the question that the family are still asking today. 15-year-old William Cornick brutally stabbed his Spanish teacher, Anne Maguire, to death in a classroom full of fellow pupils. He pleaded guilty to the murder and was sentenced to 20 years in jail. But for Anne's family, unanswered questions about her murder still remained. I think the particularly fascinating element of this terrible story for me is the fact that the family feel that while somebody is serving a prison sentence for Anne's murder, they don't feel that justice has been done. And that's because they don't feel the questions as to why a boy can walk up to a teacher in a classroom and stab her with a knife seven times has satisfactorily been answered. In the aftermath, much had been made of whether Anne Maguire's murder could have been prevented given there were opportunities to stop it. Will Cornick went into school with knives in his bag, including a, a large kitchen knife which he used to kill Mrs Maguire, and a bottle of whiskey. He told around about 10 children on, in the first lesson and during the morning what he was going to do in quite explicit terms. None of those children raised the alarm. But Don Maguire has always argued that somebody at some point should have asked those children why. There were two reasons given for this. One was that um, they thought this was part of his persona, that he was joking, that he was being demonstrative, showing off, because he was used to making comments about death and people should die when they upset him. But 
one other thing that was very notable was that he made threats to those when they were alarmed by what he'd shown them. He showed at least one of the boys the knife itself and told him how sharp it was. And I think that boy was quite scared. And he basically told some of the children that uh, um, if they told members of staff, then uh, what he did would be worse. A lot of people said to the pupils that was in the class, oh, why didn't you stop him? Or why didn't you jump up and attack him? But I don't think in that moment anyone knew how to react. It was an absolute shock to everyone. I think it was just so out of the ordinary and no one expected it that there was nothing that could have been done to stop it or to prevent it. Questions were also asked about why nobody reported the deadly threats Cornick was making on social media. I think what happened is that none of his friends reported what he was saying on Facebook or by direct message because they just assumed it was part of his dark humour. They didn't take him seriously. Pupils or young people use social media sites to let off steam and make very disturbing thoughts available to others on a relatively frequent basis. But then as the threats became more specific, where he actually said he was going to kill her, people almost assumed that somebody else would do something about it. We call that bystander apathy, where we don't alert somebody because we make an assumption that somebody else will alert somebody. For those involved in the case, it's clear there was no way of preventing this awful tragedy. All I can say is that on the basis of the, the evidence that, that I saw, which was substantial, there was nothing to indicate that uh, any person, without the benefit of hindsight, at any point prior to the murder, would have been able to predict quite what an extraordinarily awful thing William Cornick was going to do. She was supposed to go to watch her daughter dance, and that's what made it worse because of what Will did on that day. But I believe that if she hadn't have been in that day, he would have only done it the next day or the day after. Following a campaign by Anne Maguire's family, there was an official review that looked into what happened. That review has concluded that the school were not to blame, the pupils were not to blame, and that there were no obvious signs, no obvious risk indicators that this level of violence was going to be used. If somebody had been making threats to kill a teacher who had a history of um, offending, had came from a uh, bad family, had made uh, lots of threats to lots of different students and was in trouble with the police already, maybe they would have dealt with that differently. Maybe it was the fact that they were almost biased in their decision making because he didn't fit the profile of somebody who would do something so violent. Probably the most important person interviewed by the review was William Cornick himself. Will's explanation for why he did what he did was that a red mist had simply descended and he was powerless to resist it. But the interviewer challenged him and said, actually, you weren't in that classroom then. You weren't getting angry. You weren't in front of Anne Maguire. So he then kind of changed slightly and said that what he actually wanted was to be stopped. And the interviewer again challenged him that the evidence didn't say that. He wasn't trying to stop. He went along with his plan to murder Anne Maguire. So it's interesting for me that at the point, and this is after the case, he has a, an opportunity there to show some regret and say, I'm sorry. So he's still showing that lack of remorse. The biggest question that still remains unclear is why William Cornick had such an irrational hatred of Anne Maguire, which led him to viciously attack and kill her. I'm not sure that we've entirely understood why he's become um, so angry and homicidal about this particular teacher. We, we've got some of the background factors, but I, I don't think I've really, or, or any of us, have really understood this as yet. As a psychologist, I can try and understand what led a young person to take a life, 
but the actual physical act of carrying a knife, walking across a classroom in front of a whole class of students and plunging a knife into another person, taking the life of another person, that is something that everybody struggles to understand. And it's even harder to understand that when it's a child. The only person that will be able to give those answers, and hopefully one day he will, is Will Cornick. Perhaps the biggest clue to explain the murder is in the assessment of the doctors who saw Cornick afterwards. I have assessed um, hundreds of people who've committed homicide. Um, and occasionally there are people who are as callous, um, but I've never come across it in someone as, as young as this. I had no doubt that uh, Will understood exactly what he had done. He knew that he had killed Anne Maguire. He had no difficulty with comprehension, but his difficulty was with feeling any empathy um, about the fact that he'd killed her. Uh, and by that I mean that he couldn't understand or process why anybody would be upset about the fact that she was dead. That measure of control and knowledge of the impact on others, I think, says something about his personality. It says something about the excitement that, that he uh, was going to get from the offence, um, but also something about his callousness and lack of empathy. And in fact, he's boastful about this and again to me that suggests something very abnormal about the way his personality has developed um, and I thought these were um, psychopathic traits. Is Will Cornick a psychopath? Well he's too young. Is his behaviour showing traits of psychopathy? Yes. Psychopaths can't be diagnosed until they're over 18. But given the psychopathic traits he's already shown, it's likely William Cornick will spend significantly longer in jail than the minimum 20 years he was sentenced to. The question of whether Will Cornick will ever be rehabilitated so that he can be released remains to be, to be seen, but there are some challenges for him ahead. Not, not only does he have a personality disorder or adjustment disorder, with psychopathic traits, but he was also adept at convincing people in authority that he presented no harm, and that was one of the features that resulted in John Kent concluding that he was a particularly dangerous individual. Despite William Cornick's horrific crime, in the aftermath there was one enduring feature, the resilience and spirit shown by pupils of Corpus Christi College. I don't think Will could have done anything worse. He did it right. He did it two months before his exams. It was just a mess after that. The whole top floor was closed off from lessons. We had to have lessons in the cafeteria and the main school hall. And then we all had to go and sit as exams. But we did get the best results to date. Everyone said either we did it for Miss Maguire or Miss Maguire was watching over us. We all knew what a hard task we had, and I think that's why everyone put the extra effort in, because we'd missed, we had missed out on a lot of lessons and things like that. So I think everyone put extra effort in with the revision, and that's why we did so well.